Hey guys, Larry the Tractor Guy here. Man, it is super nice out here in Southwest Oklahoma today. We've got a call uh, in on a RX, a 9520RX tractor, and the guy's pulling a 1910 hydraulic drive air cart um, with this machine or this tractor, and he's having some uh, he's having some exhaust code problems, and the code that he's getting is an ECU. 4795.31 which is going to be the the differential pressure sensor on the dpf exhaust filter okay and so i want to show you real quick uh what we got into here so we pulled up here and we went ahead and got our cable out and made a live connection in service advisor and found uh <clears throat> that we did have an active 4795.31 uh dpf missing code so it's saying that the dpf uh pressure is missing okay and so we kind of went down through this and i got just a quick look glance at how many steps so there's eight steps there to kind of test that and the first one is obviously to read the diagnostic codes and make a sna snapshot information of that but then also what i found interesting here is to do the smoke test okay so we went ahead and done the smoke test and and everything was fine there with the uh, smoke test and so in the smoke test it talks about ignition on engine running at low idle for 60 seconds okay and then secondly move the throttle to high idle for 60 seconds okay and then thirdly move throttle to low idle for 60 seconds and then it's asking the question was smoke seen coming out of the exhaust Okay, well, the answer to that question was no. And I've very little times have I ever seen um, one do that. And I've seen this smoke test before. But anyway, so we go down through this and we're going to do a terminal check. Ignition off, engine off, disconnect DPF differential pressure sensor connector B5109. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and disconnect that real quick and run through this circuit test for you and show you what's going on with that so we're going to start by disconnecting the pressure sensor and basically uh, seeing if we got a bad connection by doing a terminal test well the terminal test basically is going to be just kind of looking at the pins and and looking at the connector terminals and making sure that that's all intact okay and so we've already done that uh, we're going to come down and go to step number four to check supply circuit voltage, okay? And so it's asking us here to turn ignition off, engine off, connect diagnostic test box, okay? And I'm going to show this to you real quick. It is a really, really super cool uh, tool that we use to diagnose some of these sensor problems. So uh, we're going to get that out and show you what that looks like and get that hooked up real quick. We've got our test box hooked up over there on the DPF um, differential pressure sensor, and I'll show that to you here in a minute. Okay, so we're looking at service advisor here, and it's telling us ignition off, engine off, connect the diagnostic box, connect A from the diagnostic box to, to terminal 1 of the B5109 connector, and then connect B from the test box to terminal two of the B5109 connector. And then it tells us to set S1 to position one on the diagnostic box, connect our multimeter, ignition on, engine off, press and hold S3 on the diagnostic box and monitor the voltage on the multimeter, okay? And our voltage should remain somewhere between 4.8 and 5.2, even when we wiggle the wires and, and kind of do somewhat of a wiggle test, okay? So I'm gonna show you what that looks like real quick here on the other side of the tractor and show you this test box that works really, really well for diagnosing some of these problems with these pressure switches and sensors, okay? So here is our diagnostic box, okay? As you can see here, we've got the diagnostic box plugged in there, okay, and it is a JDG-10273, and uh, we order that through our special tools, okay? So, and then on top, it's got A and B, okay? I've got A connected to one, B connected to two of the B5109 
connector that goes to our differential pressure sensor here, okay? And so we're looking at that voltage and I can kind of wiggle stuff around there and it stays right there at that 5.02, basically five volts. So what we're testing there is our supply voltage. What's unique about this test box is we can actually, now we can press and hold in on the S3 button. Okay, and we can look at our voltage on our multimeter. And that's pretty much testing that circuit. So we're shooting some voltage, basically not shooting voltage, but loading that circuit, okay, that five volt circuit from the engine controller over to the sensor and the wiring back to the engine controller, the return back. So that's what we're looking at there, our five volt supply and our return back. And if I'm holding in on that S3, we're testing that circuit. So really a unique, cool tool to be able to use to test these circuits. So we're gonna move on to the next step here in Service Advisor. Now we're gonna check and do an open, okay? Which is step number five. So it says press and hold both the S2 and the S3 buttons on the test box and monitor the voltage. So this is where we're actually loading that circuit, okay? And testing that wire and completing that loop basically from the supply through the supply and then back through the return to see if we have an open or high resistance in wiring okay so we're going to go over there and press the s2 and the s3 buttons on the test box at the same time with our supply circuit test passing the test it asks us the question does the voltage remain between 4.8 and 5.8 Two, and we're gonna say yes. So if we say yes to that, then we skip test five and go to test number six, okay? Um, the only reason we would do five is if we had an open possibly in that circuit and didn't pass that previous test. We did pass the test, so we're gonna go ahead and jump over to six, and it tells us right away, ignition off, connect the diagnostic test box, um, terminal A out of the test box to terminal three of the B5109 connector, and then uh, B out of the test box to terminal two of the B5109 connector, okay? And then set our S1 uh, position on our dial to nine on the test box, connect our multimeter, okay? And then what we're looking for there is 2.3 to 2.7 volts. So we're gonna go ahead and do that real quick. We've got our A on the back of our test box here going to B, okay, of the 5109 connector. And then we've got B on the back of our test box going to C on the 5109 connector. 5109 connector is the connector that plugs into the differential pressure sensor or delta sensor okay looking at the differential pressure of the dpf exhaust filter so we've got our test box hooked up there monitoring our voltage should be somewhere between uh 2.2 and 2.7 and we're right there at 2.47 okay and i moved all the wires around wiggled all the right wires around and we stay right there at that 2.47 volt so that proves that Basically what we're doing with the test box at this point, when we've turned the dial to nine here, as it showed us in Service Advisor, we're basically using the test box in place of our pressure sensor, okay? To check that circuit and to basically test the software in the engine controller. So we're gonna go down and look at Service Advisor real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Back down looking at Service Advisor and it's asking us is the voltage between 2.3 and 2.7 okay so the answer is going to be yes so it's telling us to go to step number seven and do a software check okay step number seven this is our software check pretty cool uh, thing about service advisor so we're reading that same voltage that we're reading on the test box up there in service advisor and it proves to be 2.5 volts and so it's asking us again, is voltage between 2.3 and 2.7 volts? And the answer to the question is going to be yes. Okay, so if it's yes, it says go ahead and replace the sensor, okay? 
and uh, so after replacing the sensor then we've got to get rid of this uh, we've got to get rid of this code because the code will not go away so in service advisor we'll go to our home tab we'll go to our diagnostics tab we'll come over to test we're going to test on the ECU so any engine controller and we can go down and do clear at after treatment latched diagnostic codes and we did that okay and then we connected everything back and didn't really have a sensor to replace at the time um, and as soon as we started the tractor and ran it a little bit the code came back check this out I'm going to show you what I found upon pulling this back apart again taking a good look at it and something you might want to keep in mind when you're looking at one of these pressure sensors because I sure missed this the first time that I looked at this okay so everything's good here on our voltage the wiring tested out good um, the sensor we could we could go ahead and replace the sensor if we'd had one so I've got the customer going after a sensor now matter of fact but after looking at this again I got to checking this out and look at this so basically the line is broke off of the bottom of the delta sensor or the differential pressure sensor so that actually would be the reason that it's not reading correctly okay and so keep that in mind when you're looking at these problems like this to think a little bit outside of the box because i wasn't and i just kind of stumbled across that on my second inspection of that sensor so we're going to go ahead and replace this sensor and then we'll take a look at this tractor again and see how everything works out here's our sensor you can see that the hose that connects that other end of that sensor is just broke clean off there so basically you've got two pipes plugged into this delta sensor and it's reading both sides of the dpf filter taking a differential pressure reading between where the exhaust enters in and the exhaust comes out of the dpf okay and uh, so without that hooked up there that was generating our uh, exhaust code there so we're going to get this new delta sensor or dpf differential pressure sensor installed and get this tractor up and running and see if we can get this customer back in the field check it out so we got the 9520rx tractor with the delta differential pressure switch on the dpf or pressure sensor on the dpf replaced and customers getting ready to go to the field now so we're gonna get this tractor out in the field real quick and and make sure that everything runs good back to planting wheat it's pretty dry condition so we're having to dust the wheat in pretty much uh, man we're sure hoping to get a rain we got a little bit of a chance of rain but not much so we're just trying to trying to dust wheat in you can see how dry and dusty it is here man it's just super super dry conditions but we've got to get this wheat in the ground the differential pressure sensor of the dpf exhaust filter was his problem and it did latch a some exhaust codes on the ecu that you could not clear without going in through service advisor and unlatching those latched fault codes and so that sensor was an re 946 719 and then after we tested that sensor i showed you in the video that i found uh, one of the pressure tubes that ties into the sensor was broke and so i believe that was the biggest part of this problem and so we got that corrected with the new sensor uh, got this tractor back up and going out in the field and uh, hope you guys enjoy the video uh, be looking for some more videos coming along here soon and uh, appreciate you guys watching larry the tractor guy signing out hey guys check out larry the tractor guy videos here other videos here subscribe here and buy all your john deere parts here we'll make it work i think gonna have to make it. we'll make it work come on let's go we need to make you need some food y'all already, already burned me out some bloopers he's sitting in a sun over here man